Hey, how's it going, Captains? Admiral Hattori here, and welcome aboard for another World of Warships video on my channel. In today's video, I am sailing the Tier 8 Premium German Battleship, the Tierpitz. With the recent change to the German battleships, where Wargaming has finally buffed the German guns by deleting the old horrendous German dispersion model and replacing it with the American British, which is a lot more consistent. I want to be very careful when I use the word accurate because technically it feels a lot more accurate, but they didn't really buff the accuracy since the dispersion value still remains the same. They just made it more consistent at times when it comes to playing um, the German battleships and firing their guns to be more similar to the Americans. It's safe to say that all the German battleships lover out there, the Kriegsmarine, love their battleships right now. I absolutely enjoy my tier bits and my Bismarck. Now, I did play the Kerr first. I haven't played the Fiery de Grosser, but I have a special place when it comes to playing the Bismarck and tier bits. They have their own, their own uniqueness compared to playing the absolute best battleship from the German line, which is the Kerr first. So the problem with the Kerr first is that it's too big it's too obvious. People want to just target the curfers, and as a result, it's a lot more difficult to get a game going with the curfers. Now, of course, if you get the right game, the curfers is a hell lot of fun when it comes to dominating with the curfers. So the guns got buff, and yes, these are not the biggest guns in the game at tier eight. They're 380 millimeters, but what makes it fun is that it's extremely satisfying to have a gun that constantly shoots at. 25 seconds, you know, every every 25 seconds you get to send uh, downrange a battleship shell. Albeit not the biggest shell, like the Alabama or Amagi with their 406 or 410 millimeter shells. But if you take a moment to think of what the tier pits has, it has armor, speed, secondaries, torpedoes, and with a short reload time and finally more reliable guns, this ship is satisfying to play. This ship is the the Rambo of battleships. You just go in and you just open up if you play correctly, of course, and you're, you're witnessing right now. I'm about to go in. Uh, if you look on the main map, clearly they have their tier 8 battleships here, but uh, I'm very careful. I'm very cautious how I'm going to pull this off. I was actually going to turn around and just back off, which I think I do for a moment here, but eventually I will hit Hit the front lines with the low yang which is also a really good player in this game but if you play to your advantages the tier bits the bismarck they, they really are strong ships and they are the hottest ships to talk about especially the tier bits because it coincides with the tier 8 one-on-one -on -one, uh, rank on uh, sprints and it, it just so happens that you know the german battleships they, they really specialize in one-on-one -on -one engagements hence their secondaries the turtle back armor and the torpedoes. Now I bought this ship way back in the day when this ship was $80. If you join World of Warships way like around 2017 or 2018, you probably didn't realize that the tier bits was the most popular tier eight premium to have. Um, she didn't have the Bismarck secondary range uh, that came after the German Battle Ships line came out because it completely invalidates the tier pits, even though the tier pits has torpedoes, but it doesn't really um, beat the glorious secondary range like the Bismarck, which is why I prefer the Bismarck over the tier pits at the time. But with the secondary buff, the dispersion buff, and just being a German battleship, the qualities of it, this is an extremely fun battleship play. I would put this ship above the Massachusetts, and right there I got a Citadel. In most cases, that's pretty rare when it comes to playing the old German battleship dispersion model. And the reason I put it above the Massachusetts, just it just has a lot of things going for it. Now, is it better than Massachusetts in, in secondary performance? Uh, that's really still up to debate because Massachusetts still has the more accurate secondaries, the more reliable to hit a target, and I'm not sure if it has a shorter uh, reload time, but it's still a deadly secondary battleship for the Massachusetts case. But this thing, this thing has a lot, you know, just the turtle back armor to show bronze sign. Now the guns, the speed, the well, the the the, the anti air is all right. It, it's I was considered good, but most people say it's all right. 
because uh, you play ships that are horrendous, like the Musashi sec, not second, is the AA. You you will learn to appreciate the German battleships anti-air. But yeah, it has a lot going for it. And right here, here's a perfect example. So the Vostok is in front of me, and if you play the old the old German dispersion model. You'd be surprised how many times where I'm baffled how I miss a point blank range like this situation target with my guns, and it's extremely frustrating. Now, before did the German dispersion um, buff, and right there I had Citadel de Vostok, but before the buff, the German battleships were actually alright. But the problem was that it got power creeped, and the way matchmaking has uh, shifted is, you know, it's, it's average tier. Because way back in the day, remember, the Tier Pits was one of the first on early premium ships in this game, and I think it is the first t premium Tier 8 uh, battleship. The average tier that you will face a target was probably Tier 6, Tier 7. And that's, that was alright. Even during the time when the German battleships came out, which was their glory days also, because most of the ships were Tier 7, and Tier 8, and Tier 6. and they were really, the quality of playing a German battleship was the secondaries, the armor, and the speed. That was it. You didn't really need to rely on your guns because you just want to close the distance and take out your targets. Nowadays, it, it, it was just, you know, it's just not fun to play a German battleship because it doesn't fit the, the, the present time World of Warships because you get matched up against tier 9s and tier 10s more often, which has bigger guns to punish you if you try to try to close the distance, which is what you want on a German battleship. You got torpedoes, like, you know, there's a lot of destroyers out there that have crazy torpedoes. And you got ships out there that does a lot of HE damage, which just withers you away. And as a result, you, you couldn't reliably kill anyone because you couldn't close the distance to use your secondaries, nor can you use your guns because your guns has horrendous dispersion. Sometimes they do behave, most of the time they don't behave at all. And right here, I'm surprised I'm still alive. So yeah, I got myself in a very sticky situation. Enemy Monarch got the broadside of me, which I, I, I was hoping that the Monarch wouldn't appear in B, but it, she just happens to appear in B while I'm sandwiched with the enemy Massachusetts. Right here, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to avoid the Massachusetts as I'm trying to get out of this position right away and not show broadside to the Monarch. Looks like torpedoes just came out of nowhere from one of the destroyers on this side of the map. So. Before it was alright because you just get tier 6, tier 7 matchmaking. The ship was absolutely dominant actually. It was the strongest tier 8 balance ship to bring out at the time because of the secondary speed and turtle back armor and the torpedoes which is an automatic win if you if you use your torpedoes correctly. Nowadays you have to rely more on your guns because you got you know all this obstacle in a way making it very difficult to play German balance ships which is why they lost their um, their reputation as being a strong battleship until now. Now, not only that, you got tier 9, tier 10 ships like cruisers that can easily balance your 380mm guns, which makes them obsolete. And when you really need that dispersion, that tight dispersion, when that cruiser shows broadside, it, it just doesn't deliver because you, you, you never know you're going to get that dispersion or not. So that, that was that one makes it very frustrating to play the Bismarck and tier pits and even the Fever de Grosser or Kerfers. Well, the Kerferus, it had the worst dispersion in the game, but it had a lot of guns, so it wasn't that bad with the Kerferus. But generally playing the German battleship line, especially with the Gneisenau's uh, meager six guns, it, it was just not a fun ship to play. And most people will probably, at the time, before the German dispersion buff, would say that the Scharnhorst would be the best ship to play, or the Kerferus. And the tier pits, you know, it's just, you just gotta get lucky with the matchmaking. You get a tier 6, tier 7 matchmaking, then you can have fun with the ship. Get tier 9, tier 10 matchmaking where all the cruisers can bounce your shells and battleships can laugh at your small caliber. Even though 380 millimeters isn't a small caliber. Yeah, it's safe to say that it was frustrating to play this ship. Now, I'm able to punish ships and as you might notice, I already have 3 citadels with uh, my tier pits in this game, which is quite a feat back in the day. Well, I say back in the day when it was just, what, three weeks ago they, had, they buffed the German dispersion. But yes, I absolutely welcome um, the German dispersion change to the model. Right here, I'm, I, I found myself in a situation where, yeah, I, I'm pretty low. I should have been dead um, a while back, but I got really lucky of not being spotted. It looks like the Benson, well, 
Not anymore. The Benson is not spawning me because the Benson got sunk by the Lo Yang. But someone else is still spawning me. And it's most likely the uh, the destroyers that is the Kid or the Asashio, which I will find out later. So right here, I stopped because I'm trying to recover some um, health. And for some reason, the North Carolina spots me. Maybe the North Carolina is spotting me since North Carolina does have better concealment than this ship. If you have Concealment Expert. And it looks like, I don't think the North Carolina has Concealment Expert because she was spotted around 14 kilometers. Or maybe she does, I don't know. But yeah, generally speaking, North Carolina's American Battleship, they have better uh, concealment than the Germans. So I'm just trying to hit the reverse gear right here, trying to get all the way to the back and wait for another minute to get my next repair party up. I'm going to use the front guns. Now, in most cases before, people would just show broadside and bank on numbers to get any results. And it was the better choice versus just bow on with the tier bits or the Bismarck because you only got four 380mm guns on super firing forward. But with the you know the, the change to the dispersion, it you, you can actually bow tank and just fire your four guns in the front and they can reliably do damage while mitigating damage from the enemy ship which is more valuable than showing broadside um, at this point which is uh, something that I actually utilize quite well. You, you will notice when I face the North Carolina, I, I, I refuse to show broadside because uh, it's just not worth getting the rear guns pointed at the North Carolina. But at the same time, I'm still able to dish out quite a bit of damage on the North Carolina with just the four facing guns. So in 10 seconds, I'm about to get my repair party and I am still spotted. The question is, who is spotting me? Is it the kid or is it the Asashio? Now I don't want to deal with the Asashio because the Asashio's torpedoes are specialized to deal with carriers and um, battleships. They're the most nastiest one and I think I just found my answer. Those were deep water torpedoes, enemy kit is on the B flag and I'm hoping that we can deal with this North Carolina right away. Now you might know this on the minimap, there is a particular ship that's I really was hoping that it would would push up, and that is the Monarch. Uh, if you just watch the minimap, the Monarch has been sitting at the back of the front lines for quite a bit. So, looks like North Carolina shows broadside. She's pushing her luck, thinking that hey, I got small guns, and she still thinks that these guns are inaccurate. But <laughs> I score a massive hit on the North Carolina, fifteen thousand damage. Three shells hit and one citadel. Uh, I'm not sure if the citadel counts as a hit. So I think it's a four shells that actually hits, or is it three shells that hit and one of them just citadel to North Carolina. As a result, the North Carolina turns, is turning around to try to disengage from me and the hipper. I'm pushing forward now since I used my last repair party, and the other reason is because the Asashio is lurking somewhere. Now I'm hoping that the hipper is going to find the Asashio, but that won't be the case, which is alright because as long as we take out one of these ships, that'd be a win-win for us. Because the Asashio is probably just somewhere out there that we don't really have the time in this situation to search for the Asashio. Now the Otago drops torpedo and I'm pretty much forced to turn broadside and not you know, get hit by the torpedoes. I'm going to have to take this hit, 18,000 damage from those massive American guns. But I'm going to return with my guns and yeah, not so great because the, the North Carolina is well angled. I kind of say well angled, but she's not really fully angled. I probably just got unlucky with that salvo. Secondaries are going off. I'm going to fire another round of salvo from the front turrets and one over pen. She's almost dead. Can we take her out? See the secondaries? No, the hipper actually takes her out. So now we took out the North Carolina, which was earlier, she was like almost full HP. So I guess that was a uh, fair trade because I'm still able to be alive in this um, part of the game. Now we're going to chase down the Otago here, or the, was it the Otago, right? No, it's the Arpeggio Takao, which is still an Otago, right? It's just a Takao class uh, heavy cruiser. So we're going to try to take out the Takao. Takao doesn't have that great of... Uh, of armor scheme and unfortunately Sashio was able to drop torpedoes and take me out. We still have a chance 
but it's just not looking so great because right here I, I spectate the monarch I was wondering if he's low HP and here's my thing about sitting in the back you only sit in the back if you're clearly outnumbered which means that you fall back because you're not gonna win the battle you're, you're better off trying to prolong the battle against whoever you're facing which is most likely you're being outnumbered or there's a ship that's better than you or you're really low HP and looking at the monarch she was more than half HP and earlier in the game well a few minutes before I died you probably noticed on the minimap that the Loyang was taking on the monarch and the kid by herself now the monarch pushes well she has like a third HP but that was because earlier uh, as I was talking like a minute ago uh, she took some damage from the mark, I bet, but she had more than enough health and she should have synchronized with the attack on the Longyang and I felt pretty confident that we should have won this engagement at B and as a result, I do lose this game but at the end of the day, I did really enjoy it um, absolutely enjoyed the Tirpitz in general there was another game that I was going to show you guys with the Tirpitz but I think that particular Tirpitz game, uh, I still lose it's just weird. <laughs> I guess that's the most German thing. You just fight to the end, but you still lose. But aside from that, uh, let me know what you think about the German battleship buff. If you haven't tried the German battleships yet, I strongly suggest you to at least grind out the Bismarck. Because honestly, if you have the Bismarck, or if you want to drop the cash for a tier pits, uh, $60 battleship, I think. Not $80 no more, right? Back in the day, it was $80 when all the matches I get into, 80% of the ships I faced was a tier pits, which is absolutely crazy. It was called the uh, tier pits apocalypse, I, I don't know. But yeah, try out the German battleships, really fun uh, the, with the new buffs, well, the change to the German dispersion. And aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time on World of Warships.